If you land into this country for the first time and read the headlines of the major dailies, be it the Daily Nation, be it the Standard, be it the Star, be it the Weekly Citizen, or those other gutter press on the streets of Nairobi, you would easily conclude that Kenya is headed for a general election in either a month's time or two months' time in maximum. Why? Because the country is already charged, politically speaking. But two Kenyans are being monitored very closely. Number one is President Uhuru Muge Kenyatta. Because Uhuru is the president of the Republic of Kenya. And therefore, he controls the state machinery, what you can call the system or the deep states. Basically, those are what normally determines who becomes the president of the Republic of Kenya. So Uhuru is being monitored very closely. The second person being monitored is the Deputy President, His Excellency, Dr. William Samairoto. Because he's the second in command. And therefore, he has the potential of succeeding President Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta, as provided for in the Constitution. Importantly, these two individuals are being monitored also very closely because they promised to support each other in 2013, from 2011, 2012, 2013, up to sometimes last, last year or last year but one. But from all indications, and depending on where you sit, these guys have betrayed each other. Either President Ruru Kenyatta has betrayed the deputy president or the deputy president has betrayed President Uru Mwe Kenyatta, depending on where you sit. But I've monitored these two individuals, their body languages, and especially a few things which have happened in the past week or two. And these my observations is pointing to two individuals who cannot reconcile. And therefore, they have decided to go separate ways. But they are using coded messages to send their message. Now, let's begin by what I've observed. Number one is what happened yesterday. The Deputy President William Ruto's statement during the burial ceremony of the late Kenai. The Deputy President was very clear that there are people who are out here, who are out to stop him from achieving his dreams. And that these guys are privileged to have the, the system behind them. But for him, he has God. So basically, the deputy president was confessing that Uru Kenyatta has betrayed him. Because we all know that we have only one commander-in-chief, which the DP alluded to. And that commander-in-chief is none other than President Uhuru Mge Kenyatta. And this is the person who promised to support him. Nobody can dare touch the deputy president if the president doesn't want. Take for example even that yesterday. Kenei was a state officer. And President Uhuru Kenyatta is basically supposed to be the commander in chief. Therefore, these guys are his subjects. But what happened? The deputy president did not even pass message of condolence from President Uru Mugai Kenyatta. Those are very important observations. Because we've seen the deputy president always making attempts to relay condolence messages from the president, especially in central Kenya. What stopped him from doing that there, even if the president did not send him? It's because these two guys have decided to end their marriage. Number two is something which happened to me. President Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta decided to send Fred Oking Matiangi to Somali. We all know that recently, Somali and Kenyans have been facing serious diplomatic wars. Somali soldiers came into the country and fought jubilant forces right inside Kenya. So basically they breached our 
our sovereignty but in ideal in ideal situation the person who should have been sent by president Ruto Kenyatta is none other than his deputy William Samoei Ruto because constitutionally that's the principal assistant to the president and assuming the deputy president was also busy the person who ought to have been sent would have been none other than the minister for foreign affairs because we are talking of foreign issues but the president decided to send a team led by Fred Okengomatiang so a message is being sent out there and it didn't begin there remember in 2019 at the beginning of 2019 through executive order number 1 President Uru Kenyatta appointed Fred Okengo Mateng as the supervisor of all cabinet secretaries. Effectively, what that did was that it had made Fred Matiangi the Prime Minister of the Republic of Kenya. And taking away the roles which the deputy president used to, 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 to perform. And that's why Kipchumba Murkomen was asking the other day, what do you want the deputy president to do? Because it, they, 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 the, the boss is not assigning him any, any job. And to the surprise of Kenyans, Murkomen revealed that this began from almost 2013. So that's something which is also coming out very clearly. In politics, everything is normally designed to send a message. So the mere fact that the president decided to send Fred King Matiang on an international assignment is a serious matter, politically speaking. That is a political statement. Number three is something which is also happening today. And I'm going to dissect it separately. Uhuru Kenyatta and Rale Odinga, and I'm told even Musalia Mudavadi, are going to Greece or to watch Gormaya beating AFC Leopard Kamaburu Kenge. I know you are a FC fan. If you are a FC fan, I don't care. <laughs> you, you have a big bus, you purchase the bus. But the truth of the matter is, Gore is going to beat you, Kamakuro Kege. And Gore currently, our form is Ikuchini Kidogo. But despite the fact that our form Ikuchini na FC Ikuju, Bado Tutawa Twanga. I'm saying that as Kogalo fan <laughs> number three. But Uhuru Kenyatta, Raylu Dinga, and Musali Mudavadi are likely to go to Kasarani to watch that match. That's a serious political statement. Uhuru Kenyatta has never attended any Gormaya match, especially the derby. It's the first time he's attending. Reno Dinga is in Siaya and he has flown. I've just, um, I've just been told he's just flown to Kasarani to watch that match. I don't know where Musele Mudavadi is. And I'm sure even several members of parliament, Zaiwa Nakimbia Kama Wendawazimu Wakilekea Kasarani, because Uhuru, Raila, and Mudavadi are likely to be there. But the fact that these three guys are headed to watch the Mashemeji Ma Derby, it's a political statement which is being sent out to Kenyans. And I want your input on that. Why do you think Uhuru, Raila, and Munavadi are going to Kasarani today? Especially on Mashemeji Derby. That's my next video. I want you to get your comment there. It's something which happened today. Number four is also something which happened today. We had Beyond Zero Marathon. And the deputy president has always been there, a permanent figure or feature in Beyond Zero Marathon. Even last year, last year but one, all through. He's always around Mama, Mama Count Minpeng, Margaret Kenyatta. But what, what happened today? The DP was missing in action. Instead, that event was graced by Kalonzo Musioka, President Uru Kenyatta, Nairobi Governor Mike Sonko. Another statement. Number five is what I can call William Ruto's allies onslaught on President Uru Kenyatta. We all know for a very long time the deputy president has been gracious enough not to attack his boss. In most cases, 
Raila Odinga is always their soft punching bag. But in the first in the past few weeks, the allies of the duty president have got have, have gathered enough courage to start attacking President Ruto Kenyatta. After Ruto delivered that speech in uh, Nakuru yesterday, Oscar Sudi tweeted something. Didimas Barasa tweeted something. And all their people, and in most cases they were attacking President Uhuru Mwake Kenyatta. So where are they getting the courage? Are they now sure that Uhuru is not playing Raila? Or are they now sure that Uhuru has dumped his deputy? Those are what we can call in Swahili, Swalanyeti. But those are politics. And clearly, in politics, those ones are designed to be like that. Number six is what I can call the Building Bridges Initiative Divide, BBI Divide. If you follow BBI from the, from the main one, it is clear that the allies of the DP have not decided they are going to oppose it. But remember, this thing is going to be taken to the referendum. Kenyans are going to decide at the, at the ballot. But the deputy president and his allies are sending signal, clear signals that they are going to oppose it. Remember, the president has made it very clear that he's going to take any responsibility for the BBI. So the person who was expected to support him most was his deputy. In his major, in his many political events, including the one he has in Meru, which I watched, everybody, because I, I, I stopped watching before he could speak, because it took long, everybody was attacking the BBI. He was there. And I'm sure when he will be given a chance to speak, he will not talk about it. He will just talk of stopping reggae. So what does that tell you? The marriage between these two individuals has come to an end. Although we know the DP said, yeah, kuna bibi moja tu, <laughs> Recho Ruto, which is okay. But when we talk of marriage, we talk of political marriage. Number seven, is Raila Odinga unclear role in government? What is Raila's role in government? That's one question which Kenyans have been asking for a long time. Ministers are... Raila Odinga is meeting ministers. He's meeting senior government officials. Last week I saw him meeting several people. Senior government officials in his office. What is his role? That is something which is disturbing the allies of the DT president. And they know probably Raila Odinga is being allowed access to government so that he can understand how government operates today. So that if he takes over tomorrow, he will not have problems. Or Raila Odinga is being facilitated to show Kenyans that he has power. And you know power attract people. So people who would have otherwise been opposing him now will change their thoughts and start supporting him just because they believe he is in power. And lastly, was President Uru Kenyatta's statement on his successor. Initially, the president made it very clear that his choice for the presidency will shock, shock Kenyans. And when he made that statement earlier, 2019, Kenyans easily concluded that he was not going to support his deputy. Me included, I concluded like that. And it became clear that the president was not going to support his deputy. And then beginning this year, the president went to Central Kenya on a charm offensive tour. And in that charm offensive tour, the president told the people of Central Kenya how people he thought would support him have betrayed him. And that he will not, he doesn't have a preferred presidential candidate in 2022. We all know that the deputy president, I mean, we all know that President Ruki Nyata was very clear that he was going to support Uhuru Ruto from 2022 to 2032. So what that, that tells you is the end of this marriage. I don't know what you think, but from where I am, 
I'm persuaded to believe that yesterday event in Akuru and the statement which the deputy president made in Akuru marked the end of President Ru Kenyatta and William Samairuto. I don't know what you think. Maybe you have your different idea. Like I was reading on a lice wall that Uhuru is playing Ruto because they have failed, is playing Raila because they have failed in government. So he doesn't want Ruto to be associated with that failure, which in my view is just consolation. The fact of the matter is Uhuru and Ruto are done. So I want to get your opinion on this. Do you think Ruto can succeed without President Uru Mwe Kenyatta in 2022? I want to get your opinion on that. And if you're bumping on this video for the first time, I want you to just take a second or two and click the subscribe button there so that next time you produce a video like this one, you get notified. Thank you guys. And please, may you have a good day. And just like I keep on saying, the best thing you can do for me is to help me create interactions. Giving the video a thumbs up and dropping your comments. And a lot of you guys are doing that. I, I think I should dedicate a time to mention those who have been very instrumental in supporting this channel. I think I deserve, uh, I think you guys deserve that video because there are people who started believing when we were from zero up to now and we've really improved. Thank you guys and please may you have a good day. Bye bye.